Ang mga kapatid, tayo ay magpapatuloy sa ating pag-aaral sa salita ng Diyos na itinuro ni Jesus sa kanyang pagsabak sa ministeryo dito sa lupa. Tayo pa rin ay sumusunod sa ating sermon series na ating pinamagatang Sermon on the Mount. We mentioned before that here in chapters 6 and 7 of Matthew, dito po tinuro ng ating Panginoong Jesus ang application sa kanyang itinuro doon sa chapter 5. Ang mga gawain or activities that will cooperate in living a righteous life in the kingdom of God. And in these two chapters, he further broke them into two categories. The first category focuses on our devotion to God. At dito po natin makikita ang kanyang katuruan about the correct way of giving, of praying, and of fasting. The next category will also highlight on how we should live as spiritual beings in union with God and with others. And today po, We will learn from Jesus' teaching about our true treasure. Ano nga ba ang totoong kahulugan ng treasure o kayamanan? Kung atin pong pansinin mga kapatid, much of what's in the Sermon on the Mount were actually to introduce us to the or Jesus introducing us to the picture of the kingdom of God. Although this was challenging for them or for us to grasp its entirety, Because the kingdom of God is such a vast reality. Napakalawak po. And if you are to operate in faith, if you are not to operate in faith, mahirap na po itong maintindihan. In fact, throughout the four Gospels in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus will be talking about the kingdom of God more often than any other subject. And usually, dinadaan niya ito sa mga parables dahil mahirap itong makita sa kabuoang picture o larawan. That is why kailangan itong tagpi-tagpiin, portion by portion, ang pagtuturo ni Jesus. Sometimes he will say, the kingdom of God is like a man sowing seed. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed, like a pearl, and many more. And today, Jesus is already conditioning us, conditioning his disciples, on how to seek and understand the real meaning of treasure dahil ang katotohanan is that the kingdom of God is a big treasure. Ano nga ba dapat ang ating tamang pagkaintindi o reaksyon in the context of the kingdom of God tungkol sa treasure? Dahil kung ating maalala, even in the eight Beatitudes na ating pong napag-aralan, it was already mind-boggling to us that being poor in the spirit is actually being blessed. Why is it blessed to mourn? Why is it blessed to be meek? In the kingdom of God, there is so much treasure There is so much blessedness that even in situations when you are deprived of justice or of being persecuted, there is so much blessing pa rin. There's so much treasure in here in the kingdom of God. Only we need to see it with the right perspective. Dahil most of the time, it is but a common problem to many that people gather what they cannot keep. People seek the wrong treasures. People fail to see the source of the real treasure. In Matthew 6 verse 19, Do not lay up for yourselves treasure on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. Most of all, people seek the things that do not really last. But before we move farther, let us clear some things up here because it is sometimes misinterpreted by others that Jesus is forbidding a disciple to become rich or to be able to accumulate wealth or material possessions. Hindi po ito ang tinuro ni Jesus because that would be contrary to the whole counsel of the scripture. Hindi na sana inutos ng Diyos na tayo ay magtiyaga at kumayod at magtrabaho. In fact, He blesses our works and multiply our produce, right? He makes people rich for it is in His ability and power to bless. Remember, Abraham was a rich person. Joseph was a rich man. David, We have Solomon. When Jabez prayed to enlarge his territory and become rich, he granted it. The Old Testament heroes of faith were actually wealthy individuals because God prospered them. Wealth or position or treasure is not the problem that Jesus is trying to teach here, but the tendency of the human heart to excessively seek these things. This is what Jesus is guarding against. Dahil kung ito ang magiging focus ng tao, even our ability to enjoy the small and simple things in life ay mawawala. 
Observe nyo po yung mga taong the only purpose in their life is to get rich. Minsan hindi nyo na makita ang umiti. And this is not the will of God. Because what they are overly concerned with are the things that, you know, do not really last and do not have real eternal value. And this is not a new teaching either. Because even the Jewish writers before Jesus came to earth had the same teaching regarding wealth or earthly treasures. If you read the Proverbs, if you read Ecclesiastes, and all over the scripture, we see that this reminder is everywhere. In Proverbs 23, Don't wear yourself out trying to get rich. Be wise enough to know when to quit. Because in a blink of an eye, wealth disappears. For it will sprout wings and fly away like an eagle. The accumulation of wealth for its own sake is deceptive because this will only give a person a false sense of security. The earthly treasures are fleeting and they are not meant to really stay. So to help us understand, Jesus provides three pictures on this verse. Moth, rust, and thieves. Now Jesus begins with a picture of a moth or yung gamo-gamo that will destroy. Now, in the ancient world, wealth was expressed by fine clothing. Remember Solomon in his riches? His riches were described through his elaborate clothing. But moth, yung mga gamugamo, they were a common problem. They could eat into clothings or clothes and they will ruin the clothes. Ngayon, meron tayo mga mothballs, no? But they only delay the process. Moth are really not the issue here. Clothes are not forever. Yun yung issue. If you treasure your clothes, masisira din yun. They will lose their beauty over time. Second, Jesus says, avoid seeking things that can rust and destroy. The Greek term that is best translated for rust is eating away. Kinakain. Ang kalawang nangangain ng bakal. So kung ang iyong kayamanan ay bakal, hindi ka rin ligtas nito. Someday you will have to throw it away. And third, Jesus was teaching to avoid riches which thieves can steal. Sa panahon ngayon, ang pagnanakaw ay nag-evolve din kasabay ng technology. Minsan isang iglap lang, nawala na lahat ang iyong kayamanan. Kasi minsan mga papel lang, nakakatakot. Pwedeng ma- mawala lahat. Hindi lang pera mo sa bahay, minsan pera sa bangko. Where currencies are fluctuating in values, yung pera mong malaking halaga, in few years time, Wala nang halaga yun. These things are subject to the destructive effects of life in a fallen world. Kaya sabi ni Jesus, wag iyan ang hanapin ninyo. Jesus saw the futility of it all if yun ang hinahanap mo sa buhay mo. He is cautioning us against the danger of finding our identity on the earthly wealth. Dahil ang mga bagay na hinahanap mo, minamahal mo yan eh. Pinagpapahalagahan mo yan eh. Minsan nahuhuli tayo sa mga bagay na ating hinahanap. You know, even the people who were following Jesus because He multiplied bread, some people really did not look for Him, but because they wanted the food that He multiplied. That's why He said to them, don't work for food that spoils. Work for food that gives eternal life. Ito ang dapat hinahanap ng tao, more than food. Kung ang pagpapagal mo ay hanggang dun lang sa pagkain na nabubulok, kawawa po. Kung maghahanap ka lang din, kung magpapagal ka lang din, dun ka na sa hindi nabubulok. And when Jesus is saying this, He was actually driving us to the point of the real issue, which is the issue of the heart. He says in Matthew 6.21, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Which brings us to our principle. How we value our treasure depends on how we see them. How a person values things is really dependent upon the nature of that person's heart. Because really, you only tend to seek what to you is important. Kung ano ang mahalaga sa'yo, doon mo pinagtutuunan ng pansin, ng panahon, ng effort. And amazing that Jesus connects the issue of the heart to the help of one's eyes. Of course, the spiritual eyes. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? In fact, this part of the passage is often misunderstood and misinterpreted as out of context. 
dahil parang may disconnect. Una, Jesus was talking about treasure. Then he talks about the eyes. And then the issue about money. No? Parang na-sandwich ang topic na ito about sa eyes. Sa dalawang topic na treasure and money. But if you look closer, Jesus has not really changed the subject here. In fact, he is only giving us another way of explaining that people will look or seek only what their hearts dictate. In other words, the health of the eyes are dependent on the health of the heart. That is why magtataka po tayo na kahit sa loob ng ating Christian community, meron pa ding mga tao na hindi tama ang kanilang pananaw tungkol sa mga kayamanan na pinagkatiwala sa kanila ng Diyos. They, not see, they do not see riches at their true value because in the first place, their hearts are not in tune with God. A healthy spiritual eyes will see beyond the material things and they look for the things that last forever. May isang parable po na tinuro si Jesus tungkol sa isang dishonest manager. Upon realizing that his master is about to remove him out of his job because he was wasting the money's or the master's money or possession, he did a very bold move. Tinawag niya ang mga nagkakautang sa kanyang master at, at kanyang tinanong, O ikaw, magkano ang utang mo sa amo ko? Sabi niya, 900 gallons of oil. Okay, take your bill and make it 450. Ikaw naman, magkano ang utang mo? Sabi, 1,000 na kahon ng trigo. Sabi, okay, take your bill and make it 800. Now, the master found out what his man- manager did and you know what happened? The master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. Natuwa po ang kanyang master. For the people of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own kind than are the people of the light. And this is what he said, I tell you, Use worldly wealth to gain friends for yourselves so that when it is gone, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. Jesus obviously did not approve of his dishonesty here. Kaya nga dapat mapatalsik na yun siya eh. But the way he looks at wealth as a tool to alleviate the poverty of others and show the generosity of the master is gaining friends for himself. Ito, this honest manager pa nga ito eh. But we are to be more than this man because we are godly managers of the Lord entrusted with earthly treasures. Alam natin that we manage these treasures in order to help others, in order to bring out the nature and character of God in us. We are supposed to be Christ-like in the way that we handle even our earthly treasures. How to transform the earthly treasures into heavenly treasures? By releasing it, by investing it with people, or using it for the works of God. The money itself will only have earthly values, but the moment it touches people's lives, or it contributes to the kingdom of God, you are transforming this earthly treasure into heavenly one. That is why the Bible is flooded with verses on giving generously, giving liberally, Paul is advising Timothy in this verse by saying, Command those who are rich in the present world not to be arrogant nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. You know, it is the heart that is the key in transforming an earthly wealth to heavenly treasure. Just like how Jesus looks at the widow who gave her last money in offering to God. In Mark 12, he calls his disciples to him and said, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They give out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. She gave the last two coin as treasure to God. You know what kind of heart she has? The heart of devotion. The heart that looks at to God as more important than any other treasure in this world. And that two coins, like when you go to a forex, has more value than any million of those rich people who give, but whose hearts are not aligned with God. 
when a heart is not right, there is always a reason to accumulate. On another parable, he told his disciples that, you know, when a certain man, his ground yielded an abundant harvest, what he did was to plan. He said, what should I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grains. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool. This very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich toward God. This will then lead us to our promise. When you make God your master, you will gain heavenly treasures. Jesus continues to teach, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mama. Jesus is sharply expressing this truth that you cannot just serve two masters. Loyalty to one's master is extreme. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. This is how Jesus prepares his disciples for his call later for their unconditional commitment to him as their Lord. In Luke 14, 26, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brother and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. We are not taught to hate here, but the context here is in terms of degree of comparison. When put side by side, God is number one, dapat ang kasunod ay hindi number two, hindi rin number three, kundi malayong malayo ang agwa. The disciples would later understand this by their experience sa panahon na ang ilan sa mga tagasunod ni Jesus ay umalis na sa kanilang grupo. In John 6, from this time many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. You do not want to leave too, do you? Jesus asked the twelve. And Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Peter's answer says it all. The Lord is his master, and there is no other choice, and there is no other. Sure, he can leave Jesus and start fishing again and earn his earthly living and be spared from persecution and death brought about by following Jesus. But Peter is seeing more than earthly treasure here. He is seeing Jesus as the only one who can provide eternal life. In short, Peter continued to serve Jesus because to him, Jesus is the real treasure. To whom shall you go? This is a statement of a single-mindedness. His hope is in one, Jesus Christ alone. Now, what is your treasure? Kung kayo po ang tatanungin. As Peter calls Jesus, that he has the words of eternal life, may Jesus to you be the same. Christ more than anything else in this world. Christ is everything. And if you have Christ, then you have everything. And serving Him alone to be your master is to gain the true treasures and you will not regret it. You know, side by side with the treasures of this world, Jesus will outshine everything. There is this beautiful hymn entitled, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Look full in His wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. Jesus is the treasure we all should seek. And He radically taught this to a young and rich man who asked Him, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He knows the commandment and he followed it even from a very young age. But Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said, go sell everything you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. Yes, this young man loved the commandment of God and devoted himself in obeying it. But there is one thing that kept him from gaining eternal treasure. And what is that? His earthly treasure. If your earthly treasures prevent you from following and serving the master, then sell it. 
and give it to the poor and then follow your master. Wag kang manghinayang dahil greater are your treasures in heaven. Because in the final analysis, when you make Jesus your master, you will gain everything. Nothing is lost but gain everything. If we have one verse in Paul's letter that will define his life as a servant of Christ, this will be the verse. Philippians 3, 8, 7 to 8. But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ. So what now? This week, as a way of practical application in order to apply or the Word of God today, let me share two things that I pray will be helpful for you. Invest your money and time and effort in the work of the kingdom. What are you going to do with your earthly treasures? Whatever you keep, you lose it one day. But whatever you send ahead by investing it in the lives and the souls of those around you, you will gain eternal reward. Your tithes and offering is a spiritual investment too. Or any organization outside the church that can take care for the poor and welfare of people who are lost. Proverbs 19.17 Whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord and he will reward them for what they have done. Number two, introduce Christ to others. Jesus looks at the human soul to be more valuable compared even to the whole world. In Matthew 12.16 Verse 26, 20, 26, what good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? So invest your time by introducing them or introducing Christ to them, who is the only way to the Father, who is the only salvation available. Those souls of people who will someday greet you in thanksgiving when you step on to heaven, they will thank you for introducing Christ to them. And this will be a great and amazing anticipation. This is your true treasure. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and Amen.